There are so many breeds of goats in the world right now, so how do you know which one is best for your farm? Well, today we're gonna to talk about the Alpine goat, which is what I breed and raise. We're gonna go over statistics as to why they're good, why they're bad, and things that I like and dislike about the breed. Hello everyone, welcome to Green Mountain Farm. I'm Melody Simpson, the founder and owner. And today we're gonna to be talking about American Alpine goats. Right now, I've got three American Alpine does on one acre of land. These two girls are currently in the breeding program. I have one retired doe who is 11 or 12 at this point. But enough chatting, let's get down to the statistics. So as I'm sure you can see, Alpines are a medium to large breed of goat. Sometimes they can have waddles, like Genesis does, which are just little pieces of skin that come off of the neck. Their horns are very large and sweep back, but I always disbud my goats, except for Genesis here, who was pulled. So that means that she naturally does not grow horns. Alpine goats are usually used in commercial dairies or as pack goats. Now, if you're not sure what a pack goat is, it's pretty much just a hiking buddy so they can carry your bags, your water, and just be like a dog on your hike. I think Genesis might be too lazy for that. All right. The does or females of alpines are usually at least 135 pounds at adulthood and bucks are usually at least 170 pounds. There are multiple color variations in this breed, such as Cou Blanc, Cou Clair, Chamosé, Two-Tone Chamosé, Genesis is Two-Tone Chamosé, and Astrid is Cou Clair. And of course, Isla is Cou Blanc. As far as personality goes, alpines are very alert, very curious, as I'm sure you can tell, very, very friendly, and very stubborn. Although alpines are known to not be as hardy when it comes to parasite resistance, I have a whole spiel about that where I think it comes down to genetics more than the breed, but that's another video for another day. The breed is very heat and cold tolerant, but not very tolerant to humid conditions. Very needy. <laughs> as with most goats, you need to be aware of muddy or wet areas in your land because they can form hoof rot. Alpines tend to mature pretty early, so anywhere from like three to five months, both your buck and doe could become fertile. All goats have a gestation of around 145 to 155 days, which is about five months. And this breed tends to have one to two kids per birth, although triplets are not uncommon. So now we've got the basics covered, I know you guys are probably really interested in hearing about the dairy production. Alpines are known to have a long lactation and high production of milk. Having long lactation is really helpful because that means you don't have to breed them back so often, you can milk them for multiple years in a row. Now it will vary a lot from animal to animal how much milk you're getting per day, but you can expect about a gallon a day per your alpine goat. Although with really good genetics, like Isla, my retired doe, would give me two gallons a day. Alpine milk is pretty low in fat content. I believe it averages around like 2.5 to 4%, which is pretty low compared to other breeds such as Nigerians or Nubians. Come here, Isla, you wanna say hi? Isla decided to come by. Again, this is the Cou Blanc color. With this high production, this means that their udders tend to be pretty large and they have larger teats, which makes it easier to milk. So as I said, I have American Alpines, which are different from the French Alpines, which are more of a purebred Alpine. American Alpines tend to be larger, higher production, sturdier, hardier animals, just because of the local genetics they gained. To get an American Alpine, you either cross an American Alpine and an American Alpine or a French Alpine and an American Alpine. The only way you can get a French Alpine is by crossing a French Alpine with another French Alpine. So now that we've gone over all the statistics, I wanna share my personal experience with many years of raising these animals. I am in love with everything to do with Alpines. Their looks, I love the way they look. I love their size. I'm not a huge fan of the tiny goats, but they're also not the largest breed of goat. They're so sweet. They're very smart. So they pick up on things like your routine really quickly, which is very helpful when you have dairy animals. They'll even learn the order in which you milk them. So if you're milking multiple does, they'll learn which one goes before the other. I love that they're a high production animal, especially because my company focuses around a lot of goat milk in my goat milk soaps. And it's a great drinking milk as well, and it makes amazing cheese. I would say the only downside when it comes to the milk is the low fat content. And I only say that because that means there's gonna be less cream, so you're not really gonna be able to make a lot of butter 
or cream products. Also, it's good to note that goat milk is naturally homogenized, which means that the fat molecules don't really separate from the rest of the milk. So you're not gonna get as much cream that floats to the top like you would with raw cow milk. I love the American Alpine because they are more hardy and healthy, although you can always get unhealthy animals no matter the breed, so always be paying attention to genetics. Let me know if you want a video on that because that is a whole other spiel. So pretty much everything about the Alpine I love except for one thing. They are stubborn, as I said. <laughs> These goats are the most stubborn goats you'll probably ever meet, but I think it's 100% worth it. Stubbornness is something that can be worked around. For instance, I am not one to let my baby goats nibble on my fingers or on my clothes. Some people think it's cute. I think it's annoying. A baby goat who learns that they can do whatever they want to your clothes, to your hands, is a very wild goat once they're over 100 pounds. So because I know that they have that tendency to be stubborn, I just work really hard to make sure that they don't learn those bad habits as a baby. So yeah, I really don't love that temperament about them but it's definitely something that be worked around and I 100% say it's worth it. So yes, I think you should get Alpine goats, but do whatever is best for your farm. There are so many other breeds out there that have great traits about them, bad traits about them. Every animal has its pros and cons. If you'd like a video on what I look for in a goat that I'm purchasing, let me know. I can make one about that. But thanks for watching guys. I hope you have an amazing day. I hope you gained something from this video. Let me know if you're gonna get Alpines. You definitely should. Have a great day, y'all. All those people who are filming with their goats. Show me how easy.